Um, research is one of my passions. <laughs> I love doing research. And uh, I think the open air has, has afforded me the, the, the opportunity um, to be able to, to work on something that I'm passionate about. It's actually a privilege, you know. It allows us to probe um, the legislative environment and make some suggestions to make sure that there is development, open development in Africa. So it's quite important. In the last few years internationally, there's been a call for better evidence on intellectual property policy making and legal reforms. So it's, it's just the right time that OpenAI is focusing on, on research. So it's my pleasure and privilege to be here today with my Kenyan friends to talk about uh, the issue of intellectual property and its role in innovation, and more particularly its role in African innovation. We know that African innovation has been historically marginalized in the narrative of intellectual property, and so this Open Air project is a very significant initiative that begins to, to present the nature of innovation and creativity that goes on in Africa. What we're seeing is a a multiplicity of models for managing intellectual property rights to facilitate innovation. And that's where the Open African Innovation Research Project comes in. The Open Air Project is really designed to try to shed light on when these different models are most suitable. And we're trying to look in different fields, patents and copyrights and trademarks and traditional knowledge, conducting case study research into a wide variety of sectors where these models of, of managing knowledge are being deployed. We're doing a really exciting case study for Open Air and it focuses on South Africa's newest um, piece of IP legislation. Um, quite a mouthful, it's the Intellectual Property Rights from Publicly Funded Research and Development Act. Um, and the, the bottom line of that legislation is to try and um, encourage universities to, to protect um, through IP laws um, any inventions that come from them. Approaching um, this case study, our gut feel was perhaps that it might have unintended consequences. In certain scenarios, it could actually impede collaboration, innovation and scholarly publishing and we're testing that out through our interviews. My research topic is basically on uh, policy issues as they relate to the creation of traditional knowledge commons. At the moment as we speak right now we do not have in Kenya a specific legal regime that deals with the traditional knowledge protection. So if you have a commons that will provide an opportunity for the, the custodians to engage one-on-one -on -one with the people who want to use whatever it is and get into some licensing agreements, not necessarily within an intellectual property law framework. I'm working with two colleagues, Tobias Schoenwetter and Marian Walton. And what we're working on is a joint study to look at two mobile-based social media networks. Mix it in South Africa and uh, something called Ring Back Tone in Indonesia. Intellectual property norms uh, actually sharply define the way in which these businesses can and continue to operate. And unless we understand that peculiar mix of current intellectual property norms, the desire for innovation, and the environment in which enterprises such as these, innovative intellectual property connected enterprises, survive and thrive. Um, we won't be able to build on this success or replicate it or even at the very least preserve it. I'm working on empowering authors through copyright in Kenya, enhancing uh, open scholarship and alternative publishing. But, uh, we want to look at uh, the best way in which we can uh, reconfigure and recalibrate copyright so that it is sensitive to the needs of uh, authors in terms of recognition, for instance, acknowledgement, but also in terms of financial compensation. And at the same time, it should be responsive to the needs of end users. We're doing a case study we call a place-based intellectual property in the context of open development in Africa. And we are focusing on the Ethiopian coffee industry and the Ghana cocoa industry. I'm working on the role of intellectual property in the diffusion of innovation between informal sectors and formal sectors. My focus is Mozambique, the importance of intellectual property on identification, transfer of uh, biofuels technology. The objective of this uh, research is to 
understand if intellectual property has a role on uh, the identification and uh, then to transfer the, um, the, the technology related to biofuels. But specifically we are looking at textiles and leather products, the group kind of trademarks, not the traditional trademarks that it's very common in Nigeria. The shoes are made in Nigeria and to an extent with leather from Nigeria. They export to Spain. They are products in very raw um, form, very um, crude form. They export to Spain and Italy, then Italy refine them and then the Nigerian producers go back and buy them. So if the kind of people can improve their leather and you know brand it and then it could be like this is shoe made for in Nigeria with leather from you know this place and um, our results indicate that it's really something that can work. A case study is on the World Intellectual Property Organization development agenda. The conventional wisdom is that it's a good thing. It has changed how the World Intellectual Property Organization operates. Uh, but the, the question is whether those changes that are happening in Geneva, the headquarters, are being reflected on the ground. And that's what we are trying to understand. Success factors would be that we would be seeing more evidence-based uh, analysis of intellectual property issues and innovation and creativity. We would see more researchers because we have a component on training and capacity building. We would see younger researchers uh, getting into the space of intellectual property. And we would see some centers of excellence or hubs where institutions have increased their engagement on intellectual property research.